So let's take a look at solving linear inequalities. Since we already know how to solve linear equations, linear inequalities, um, the solutions are actually quite very much the same. We've just got a handful of exceptions and some of them are very obvious. So for example, instead of having an equal sign down the middle um, to say that left side is equal to right side, instead we have an inequality symbol. So less than or greater than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Instead of having a single solution, there's a range of possible solutions that will make the statement true. Um, as well, our solution can be represented on a number line and the, so those three are probably um, not unexpected. However, the last two differences um, are actually quite significant. So first off, instead of one verification, we actually should be looking at two different checks. So the first check is our boundary check. And so it's looking at what is the smallest or the largest possible value. Um, and in order to do a boundary check, the good news is you guys already know how. It's simply your left side, right side verification, just as we do for um, checking equations. The second check is a check for the direction. So is it actually greater than or is it less than? So we're just going to be picking a test point or a possible value that satisfies the solution and then we'll test it in the original inequality to see if it's true. So lastly, and this is probably the most confusing one for a lot of people, is that when we multiply or divide both sides by a negative, we have to flip the inequality symbol. So if it was greater than, it becomes less than. So let me give you an example of what that might look like. So just for, um, let's just say, we'll just talk about numbers. So if I have the statement that two is less than, six. That's obviously true. Um, if we were to multiply both sides by, let's say, three, then my new left side is six, my new right side is 18, and six is still less than 18. The left side is still less than 18. That's true. Um, if we were to divide both sides by two, and then we would have three on the left side and nine on the right side. And again, the left side is still less than the right side. So no changes whatsoever. If I go ahead and let's say even add negative one to both sides. So three plus negative one is of course two and nine plus negative one is eight. Again, no change is happening right there. Everything is still stays true. The left side is less than the right side. So let's take a look what happens when I multiply both sides by let's say negative 4. So if we multiply both sides by negative 4 then we would have negative 8 on the left side and negative 32 on the right side. Oh well, wait a second, the left side is no longer less than the right side, it's now greater than. And so this is what happened when we multiplied both sides by negative 4 um, we had to flip the symbol so the less than became a greater than. And the reason why that's true is because the kind of our association is of what is less than or greater than on the positive numbers is different than what is greater than or less than in our negative. So if we're talking about our positive values, 100 is of course greater than 10. The larger the value is, the greater that it is. However, when we get into the negative side, then the larger that value seems to be, but if it's negative, it's actually smaller. So negative 100 is actually quite a bit less than negative 10. So what happens when we multiply by a negative or let's say divide by a negative, or if I divide both sides by negative two, then now I'm flipping from negative back into positive. And so again, the rules switch where the larger the value is, the greater that it's going to be. And so you can see our symbol flipped again. Okay, well, let's put all of those into action and we'll do an example then. So let's say we will solve um, and 
check and check. So we'll do our two checks or two verifications. So we will solve negative 3x is uh, plus 5 is less than or equal to 23. So of course, if it was negative 3x plus 5 equals 23, we would first go ahead and subtract 5 from each side. Which means, of course, that we now have negative 3x is less than or equal to 18. And so then now, of course, we want to isolate our variable. So we will divide both sides by negative 3. So divide by negative 3 and we'll divide by negative 3. And so um, when we divide the left side by negative 3, we just get x. And then on the right side, 18 divided by negative 3 is negative 6. But because I divided both sides by a negative, then my symbol flips direction. So now it's x is greater than or equal to negative 6. So our first check is our boundary check. And so what we want to know is if, in fact, if in fact, um, is it that negative 6 is the smallest possible number that we can select to make that true? So what we want to do is we want to substitute that in. So our check for boundary, so I'll write boundary check, and I'm going to substitute in x equals negative 6. So I'm going to pretend this was just an equation. So my left side was negative 3x plus 4. 5, substitute in that negative 6, so negative 3 times negative 6 plus 5, and so then that is positive 18 plus 5, which is of course 23, and our right side is also 23, so left side equals right side. So that means that the, that the smallest value, so x greater than or equal to negative 6, the smallest possible value that x could be would be negative 6. The next um, check that we want to do is our direction check. And so it is the, especially um, because we may have to flip the symbol, and we did in this particular case, we want to make sure that we're actually supposed to pick values that are greater than negative 6 and not less than negative 6. So we want to pick a possible um, value that uh, would satisfy the inequality um, and so we call that a test point so we can pick any value of x greater than or equal to negative 6. I don't want to pick negative 6 even though I it technically is a correct test point. However, it doesn't give me any information about direction. So I want to actually pick something greater than negative 6. Um, so we could pick negative 5, negative 4. Um, 0 is, of course, an easy one to pick. So let's take a look at 0. So 0 um, is our test point, x equal to 0. And we're just going to put that into our inequality, our original inequality, so negative 3 times x plus 5 less than or equal to 23, or negative 3 times 0 plus 5 is less than or equal to 23, not moving anything back or forth. Um, so the left side is simply negative 3 times 0, which is 0, and 5, and 5 less than or equal to 23. Yes, that is true. And so that means that um, x equals 0 is a possible solution, so let's just go ahead and graph that It's on our number line. And so we've got um, negative 8, I'm just going to count by 2's here, negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4, and 6. So because um, we essentially want to put a point on all possible values that x could be, x could be negative 6. Um, and so it's a solid circle that goes on our boundary point. Our test point 0 was true, so we know that our arrow should be going up and to the right. So our solution, x greater than or equal to negative 6, and there is our graph. Awesome. Let's take a look at a word problem then. 
So here we've got Shop A that charges $18 per hour to do a spring cleanup for your yard, while Shop B charges a starter fee of $40 in addition to $12 per hour. So after how many hours would Shop B be a better deal? So um, of course it's recognizing that if Shop B is going to be a better deal, that means it's cheaper. So, um, for that, of course, anytime we solve something algebraic, we want to label our variables. Since we're looking for the number of hours, it makes sense. Um, let's label H as um, H is the number of hours. So, in which case, we could say then for shop a, so let's just write this out really quickly just in words. So we want shop A um, to be more expensive, so greater in price. So the charge for shop A charges is going to be greater than the shop B charges. And so just sometimes putting it in words um, helps to clarify things for us. So shop A is going to charge $18 times the number of hours. Shop B charges are going to be $40 plus $12 per hour. So 40 plus 12H then. So let me just fix that addition symbol. So very simple um, inequality to solve. So as with equations, we want to isolate our variable. So I can subtract um, 12H from each side. So that leaves us with 6H is greater than 40. Um, and of course it's greater than. It's not equal to because then that would mean that they would cost the same. Um, so at this point we want to divide by 6. We're not dividing by a negative at, at any point, so there's no need to flip the symbol. So H um, is then greater than 46 or could reduce that to 20 thirds if we were to change that into a mixed number, which makes sense when we talk about time. So that means that we're talking about six and two thirds hours. And of course, one third of an hour is 20 minutes. Um, so assuming that they're charging for part of an hour as well. So um, this says then as soon as we go um, two thirds of an hour is 40 minutes. So six hours, uh, six hours and 40 minutes. So essentially, as soon as um, the time goes greater than six hours and 40 minutes, so even seven hours, then shop A is going to charge more than shop B, and thus shop B would be the better deal. So just to write our statement to answer the question, after how many hours would shop B be a better deal? Um, so um, after six hours and 40 minutes, Shop B will be cheaper. And of course, that's a better deal. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions and um, please complete the assigned work.